Carrying on from the last tutorial, we had Adobe Media Encoder opened and we have the item added to the queue. I'm just going to maximize this so we don't see Premiere in the background. So the item is added to the queue and we've got the preset that we selected inside Premiere Pro chosen. However, I'm actually going to delete this at this stage and select it and I'm going to hit this little negative button, this remove button here, so that Adobe Media Encoder is empty. Are you sure you want to do it? Yes, I am sure because it's actually possible to add a sequence directly from the media encoder. So let's assume for the moment that Premiere Pro was shut. And I can either go to File, Add Premiere Pro Sequence, or I can click the plus button here, which will open the dialog box, or I can simply double click the gray area here to get the same dialog box. So let me just show you the two ways of doing it. Firstly, I need to go and find out where that project is. So I shall just navigate to the project, I know where it is. So there's the project. I'm just going to double click to open that and I get a dialog box. It says import Premiere Pro sequence. You'll notice it says connecting to dynamic link server. And this can take a moment or two as it's going in and it's searching for the sequences inside the project. And it's actually brought forward all the bins that I've created inside my project. If I just quickly show you my project, here's my project. If I navigate up, there are those bins. So it does matter how you organize them for ease of finding them in Media Encoder. Just going to go back to Media Encoder. Obviously, we know they're in the Sequences bin. We can open that up, and it's the edited one that I want. And I can click OK, and it brings it in. It looks very slightly different if you actually go to File, Add Premiere Pro Sequence, in that you actually get a navigator. So you can actually navigate to where you happen to know it is on your system. So I happen to know mine's in a D drive. I know it's in my training files and so on you can navigate to the actual project that you're looking for and then when you've actually found the project that you're looking for you can actually click on that particular one and then again you've got the same thing now it's a lot quicker this time but you would still get the dynamic link server business to do the same thing and then you can go in there and choose the one that you want to add so it's a very slightly different way of doing it one uses your ordinary explorer the other one provides you with an explorer that you can go with but they'll both take you to the same place eventually and they'll both take a little while to connect this has done it a lot quicker because I've already been through the process once already so I click cancel and in it comes so this is the actual project ready to go if you click on one of these buttons here you're actually going to go back to the settings dialog box. If I click on that one there, you'll see that a similar settings dialog box to the one that we just dealt with has been opened, and we can go in and make changes if we need to here. But that's actually not the best way of doing it. So I'm going to click cancel, and I'm going to go over to this panel over here where I have system presets. And this is actually where we can apply the best presets to go with our project. And again, we can move panels, so I'm just going to pull this across so we can see the presets. And you'll see you've got audio-only presets, you've got broadcast presets, you've got camera presets, and you'll see that you've got quite a lot of different options available here in the different camera options that you might have. So you've got all these different options that you can work with that you can select and they're broken up into groups that are very very easy to be able to get to. So you've got the OP1A options here that we had and you've got the standard definition the XD Cam HD so you've got the presets that you can go in and grab so if you've got to export to broadcast options or you've got to export to camera options they're all in their own individual category and if I want to change them say actually I didn't want this HD version because the bitrate was going to be far too high for me actually something better perhaps a YouTube one would suit me far better I can open up the web video actually it opens up like this by default but you can navigate down to whatever it is you're actually looking for and then simply grab okay I'm looking for YouTube HD 1080p 25 simply grab it and drag it on top until you get that two-way arrow the two-way arrow says I am going to replace the setting that you already had with this new setting and when I let go the new preset is applied and ready to go and we can see where its output path is here if I want to change the output path so I want to put that on my desktop instead I can click and navigate to wherever I want it to go so if I create a new folder and I call it samples sample output click OK and actually choose that one and you can see that the edited sequence is going to go there and I can click save now say I want to have multiple outputs for example there are, you notice, under broadcast and cameras, you've got devices. Just going to shut web video at the moment. 
If I open up devices, you'll see that you've got Apple, for instance, and I can go in and choose iPad 2. And I could choose iPad 2 here with the 1080p 25. And if I want to add that, I can drag and drop it underneath and I get the little plus and it will add it as an additional output module. If I go over the top it will replace it, drop it underneath, it's going to add it in. So I've now got two outputs that I can do and I can go in and I can choose other devices. So I can choose more Android devices if I like. So say I wanted to do the 960 by 540, drag and drop that underneath and now I've got three outputs. Also if I want to I can choose image sequences. Now I mentioned image sequences before Image sequences give us the opportunity to produce very good or very high quality items that we can re-import to use again as backgrounds or whatever we want. We've even got the opportunity to export DPX which are very high quality outputs which are used in things like speed grade that we talked about before. But I'm just going to do a very quick one. I'm going to do a PNG sequence. So I'm take a PNG sequence and drop it underneath. If you do an image sequence you do have to be careful however. When you click the output file path it's going into this sample output and it's going to fill this folder up with lots of individual still images. Now I've got two minutes and five seconds so there is going to be an awful lot of still images if I were to output all of this. So what I tend to do with image sequences click a new folder and call it image sequences and select that folder for my output path so that those image sequences are in a specific directory sometimes you can stick things on your desktop and if you put an image sequence on your desktop and you render the whole thing out you will have hundreds if not thousands of images littering your desktop and you just have to delete them or shift them to another folder and it can be a real pain so whenever you output an image sequence make sure you output it to its own individual folder if I click save you'll see that it's got its own little path that it's got there so the sample output image sequence path now I'm actually ready to export these as files now it's going to take a while to export all of this so I'll come back to you after it's done and you'll see that this two minutes and five seconds sequence are going to be fairly big files. To actually output them you just click this button and what you will see down here in the encoding window is that all four output modules will encode pretty much simultaneously. We might find that the image sequence is a lot slower because of just the size of it and what have you. But what we're going to find is we're going to have pictures of what's going on, four sets going on down here because my computer's got a, a multi-threaded core and it can actually output these simultaneously. So this is the quick way of doing it and it's very easy to do. So I'm going to click encode, show you a little bit of encoding, come back after it has encoded and then move on to the next tutorial where we start talking about some additional options. So I'm going to click this to encode and you can see it's reading the XMP, it's reading the data about these this individual sequence and then in a moment it's actually going to start encoding. And you can see that the encoding has begun and my machine probably isn't going to be up to much until it's finished so I will come back to you after it's done. Now I've already rendered one out and you can see that we've got all kinds of funny times showing here but if you actually look at this you can see it says 12 minutes 20 seconds and then 15 and it's not been five seconds before it goes through so you can't always believe the times that it tells you on these particular ones you can see that they're going a lot quicker than they appear to go but it's telling me that the image sequence is going to take something like seven hours now clearly once these two are finished on my rather slow old machine this one's going to go massively quicker than that once they're done you're going to have a little tick mark against them and when they've all completed you'll get a, a pling a, a noise telling you that the whole render is finished. Now I'm not going to go all the way through because I don't need to. I'm just going to click stop. So if you need to stop it you can actually stop it. Click it there and it says you have chosen to stop the encoding queue. Would you like to finish the current file before the encoding stops? Actually I'm going to say no I don't need to finish it. Okay. So it's going to finish and there's that pling. That's the same sound you would get when the whole thing is finished. And if I now go to my desktop you can see here you can see these ones have stopped. But if I go to my desktop and I go to that particular file so here is sample output go to that you can see that I've got the one file that is completed and if I go to image sequence even though it hadn't been doing it very long you can see this is the fade up you can see all the images that have been created just for that short little bit you can see if that had gone on my desktop you can see how annoying that would have been 
Okay, so if you want a very quick look at the the render, you can just double click on this one and have a little watch for a little while. Okay, it was just something that we played with. So it's rendered it out perfectly. That actually was the Android pad size that was the one that was coming out. So I didn't actually name it properly, which is my fault. I should have done it when I was in there. And to be able to change the name, again, you just go to the output file name. So when you have it, you click here and you would actually change the name. So when I was there, I should have actually changed the name that I was going to give it before I encoded it. So in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking over here at the presets and at preset groups and creating custom presets and in the final tutorial we'll start to look at watch folders.